This is 3.6 Implicit Differentiation Part 2 and the first objective we want to do with this one is understand the relationship between an inverse's derivative and the original function's derivative. When you're done, just like you had in pre-calculus, you had to explain why an inverse wouldn't exist if you failed the horizontal line test on the original function. Well there is a corresponding type of criteria that must be met in calculus and that is f will not have a differentiable inverse at x equals a if the slope on the original function at a is equal to zero. So I want you to be able to explain why that screws up having a differentiable inverse. So to get there we're going to think about our old knowledge involving inverses and original functions. If you recall from your pre-calc and algebra 2 courses you could find a, an inverse for a one-to-one -one function by switching the x and y coordinates and then isolating y. And when you did that, you ended up getting that x would be f of y, isolate your y, you get y is equal to the inverse function of x. And essentially what you were doing in this function is you were undoing any of the operations that the original function would do upon x. Graphically, you had a representation that would show you the relationship between the original function and the inverse. And I've put this down here. We can see here's our original function, f, and then here's our inverse function, f inverse. And notice, if you recall, those x and y coordinates for any pair of points were going to be switched. And the picture itself would be reflected over this line, y equals x. So here's our original function. It passes that horizontal line test. And here's our inverse, which now passes the vertical line test. And therefore, it is also a function. So what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to think about what the slope at these corresponding points is going to be and how are those slopes related. So one of the ways that we can get there is we can think about the relationship with the x's and the y's. So if we remember, writing a derivative can either entail that f prime notation or we can write it as a dy dx. Now in this case, writing it as a dy dx is actually more helpful because we can think about how the, with inverses, we switch the x's and the y's. So this dy dx, or the tangent slope on the function of f, is going to turn into dx dy on the inverse function, because we switched the x and y. So that means we can look at the relationship between this original derivative and the inverse's derivative at its corresponding points. And we can see that they're really just reciprocals of each other. So if we think about what kinds of numbers have reciprocals, we can conclude that that dy dx can never equal zero because if it does, if the original function has a tangent slope that equals zero, then that's going to create a vertical tangent when we try to take its reciprocal. And vertical tangents do not have slopes. So that's why the original function not only has to pass the horizontal line test, but it can't ever have a derivative that equals zero. If it does, we don't get a differentiable inverse. The second thing I'd like you to notice is that this point a comma b on the original function corresponds to the point b comma a on the inverse. And these derivatives end up being reciprocals of each other. So if dy dx is the derivative at a is the tangent slope on f at a, so there's that x coordinate of a, then the reciprocal of that derivative is going to be the inverse's derivative at its x coordinate of b. So the tangent slope of the inverse is going to occur at b, whereas the tangent slope of the original one occurred at a. So what this means for you is that you can find the slope on an inverse function without having to find the inverse function and then take its derivative. Instead, you look for the connecting corresponding points and you can just find the slope on the original and then take the reciprocal. So we'll see that in our examples that are coming. You'll see in your notes that I have more information in your notes typed up for you than I have here, but I want to start from scratch and kind of show you where the stuff in your notes comes from. What we're going to realize is that in all of these problem types, we have points and we have slopes. And we have the original function and then we have the inverse function. Now the inverse function 
we're looking for the derivative of it when x is 2. So that means I've given you an x coordinate of 2 on the inverse function. So what does that mean for us in terms of the point on the original? Since x and y coordinates are switched, that means the y coordinate on the original is going to be a 2. So if I can figure out the x coordinate that goes with it, then I can compute the slope on the original curve by taking the derivative and plugging in that x coordinate, and then I can take the reciprocal of that to find the derivative of the inverse, that's a 1, at 2. So let's try that. In order to find the x coordinate that goes with 2, I need to solve for when the function is 2, the original function. So I'm looking for when 2 equals x to the fifth plus 2x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, and trial and error, or on your calculator, you can see that x equals 1. So I've got an x coordinate of 1. That means if I can find the derivative of the original at 1, then all I'll need to do is take its reciprocal. So by finding this x coordinate of 1 on the original curve, I've found the x coordinate for the derivative on the original, I have found the x coordinate on the original, and I found the y coordinate on the inverse. So to find this derivative at 1, I need to find the derivative of f, which is 5x to the fourth plus 2. If I evaluate that at x equals 1, I will get a 5 plus a 2, which is a 7. So that means 1 over 7 will be the derivative of the inverse at 2. So this is the process you're going to follow with problems of this type. You will be given the x coordinate on the inverse. You'll use that to find the x coordinate on the original, and then you'll compute the slope on the original at that x coordinate you found, and then you'll take the reciprocal, and you'll just kind of go around that circle. So let's see how that works with example 2. Here again I have a function. If I tried to do it the old way, which is replacing the x's with y's and isolate y, I wouldn't be able to do it because I've got a y. I'd have a y outside a sign and a y inside a sign, and isolating is virtually impossible. So instead, we're going to prove that f has a differentiable inverse by thinking about what would screw up having a differentiable inverse. Recall that the original function would have to be 1 to 1, and f prime can't ever equal 0. So if I look at the derivative of f, I get a 4 minus a cosine of x. Well, the biggest cosine can ever be is a 1, so this entire derivative is always going to be greater than or equal to 3. Therefore, f prime of x can never equal 0 for any x. That means f inverse all of its derivatives will just be reciprocals of this guy's derivatives, so this will be differentiable all the time. So next part b is we want to find f of pi and f prime of pi. So if I plug pi into f, I get a 4 pi minus a sine of pi, which is 0. If I want f prime of pi, I need to take the derivative first, which is 4 minus cosine, and then I need to plug pi in. So f prime of pi gives me a 4 minus a cosine of pi, and the cosine of pi is a negative 1. So I have 4 minus a negative 1, or 5. Using these results, I now want to find the inverse function's derivative at, or the inverse function evaluated at 4 pi, and I want to find the inverse's derivative at 4 pi. So we can see that b actually gives us information about a point and then a slope at that point on the original function. So on the original function, I had the point pi, comma, 4 pi, and the slope at that point was 5. So now we're curious to find out the inverse that's kind of related to that. Well, remember, inverses switch the x and y coordinates, and the slopes 
now at that associated point will be the reciprocal of the old slope. So we can see here that F inverse evaluated at 4 pi is just going to be pi because it's just asking for the y coordinate on the inverse that goes with 4 pi. And we can see that the derivative at that point is 1 fifth. So I'd like you now to attempt your notes web exam problems and then explain why f will not have a differentiable inverse at x equals a if f prime of a equals 0.